This is from the Wall Street Journal editorial board. Hamas holds everyone hostage. The terrorists traffic in human beings to achieve their bloody aims. It argues, quote, the civilized world is rejoicing at the release of hostages after seven weeks of hell. But that should not but that relief should not blind us to the way the jihadists are manipulating human sentiment. Hamas is using the hostages to play on Western respect for human life. Every day the truce lasts, the more time the jihadists have to regroup, slip out of Gaza, rearm, or plan more ambushes against Israelis. End of quote. In focus now, Ambassador Nathan Sales, former ambassador at large and coordinator for counterterrorism, also the founding acting undersecretary, former acting undersecretary for civilian security, democracy, and human rights at the State Department. Great to have you, Ambassador. Look, I, I was trying to get a beat on who would say too many moms would have been separated from their kids. Now, that would be interesting, coming from a group of terrorists. I mean, th this is the ultimate emotional manipulation. Grateful to have those home, but look, we have to wait day by day by day for the terrorists to tell us who's on the list. Well, that's exactly right, Harris. Look, there's no happy endings here. We, we all rejoice at the release of these hostages yeah. from Gaza, but this is not a Hallmark Christmas movie. Every single one of the people who's come out has suffered unspeakable horror. Their loved ones, their family members have been killed by Hamas, or their family members or loved ones are still being held hostage by Hamas. You mentioned little Abigail, four-year-old American yeah. citizen who turned four in Hamas captivity. Um, her parents were killed. The reason she survived was because she was able to crawl out from under the dead body of her father mm -hmm. and make it to the, the neighboring home of her best friend. So make no mistake, uh, the, the sort of group that is capable of taking her hostage, the sort of group like Hamas that is capable of holding on to a 10-month-old baby uh, by the name of Kafir, mm -hmm. they're showing you what they are. This is not a group of freedom fighters. This is not a national liberation movement. This is a terrorist organization, full stop. Kafir, by the way, um, it's been 52 days. So in a little bit, Kafir will be one. I mean, yes, he's already spent 10 percent of his life um, in a yeah. tunnel underneath Gaza, separated from his family. And, uh, you know, we heard just a couple moments ago, his name appears to be omitted from the current list of people right. who are going to be coming out today. It, that is exactly the way Hamas plays this dirty game, by holding on to the most vulnerable, by trying to raise hopes in the civilized world yeah. that maybe dawn so, will break um, and, and then crushing all expectations. Talk to me about how you negotiate, though, with and, and you've got a background in counterterrorism. So th there's always the thought that you're dealing with one particular group, Hamas, hostage taking serial killers, as I call them. But now the Islamic jihadists have got this group of, of unknown number of hostages as well. I mean, are they passing them? Are they selling them? What's going on behind the scenes and how many groups are, are is Israel going to have to negotiate with? Well, that's a great question, Harris, and we don't really know. The one thing we do know, let's start with basics. When you negotiate with terrorist groups like Hamas, like Islamic Jihad or others, you've got to do it from a position of strength. And that appears to have been what Israel did during the past five weeks. Um, the reason Hamas was prepared to release hostages, not enough and not fast enough, but the reason they're prepared to release any at all was only because Israel subjected them to unrelenting pressure, taking thousands of their fighters and leaders off the battlefield. Right pressure on these groups, that's the only thing they understand. Now, behind the scenes, who knows where some yeah. of these hostages are being held? Um, and, and that's why it's so important as we go forward into the possible extension of this deal for Israel to be prepared to resume force if Hamas goes back on its word. And look, we know that the, 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 the agreements that Hamas signed, it's mm -hmm. not worth the paper they're printed on. They are serial hostage takers and killers. They're also serial liars. They've already gone back on some of their commitments to not separate mothers yeah. and children who are going to be released. They almost tanked the deal on Saturday um, uh, before last-minute intervention got it back on track. So we can't take them at their word. We've got to watch very carefully during these mm -hmm. next crucial days as Israel considers whether or not to continue to extend this temporary pause. Look, we don't know what it's like behind the scenes when the Israeli Defense Force has taken out some of their leadership. 
I, I mean, you, you can't you can't really definitively tell. Well, did they pass some on? Who's in charge of that group? So on and so forth. This is not the same command and control that started 52 days ago when Israel said, "This is it. This is war." Um, we'll cover every second, Ambassador. It's always great to get your perspective and expertise on this. And God bless the people who are waiting and those coming home. Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.